The DBSAT, or the Database Security Assessment Tool, is a free tool that Oracle provides to help you secure your database. So the latest version is 2.0, and the documentation covers the components in detail. So some of the key new features of DBSAT 2 are the discoverer component, which searches for data based on some customizable criteria you can set. And it also outputs in a new JSON output format. So you can ingest the data into different tools and utilities. So a key point with DBSAT is when you run these scripts, it collects data from the operating system and your databases. And it outputs the format in the fully encrypted files. And it's important that, to know what you can do with, you can do what you want with these results. You're not obliged to share the information with Oracle or with anybody. So it's a no-brainer really to secure your database. So first we need to download the DBSAT zip file. So we can do that from the official download page. It'll prompt you for your details and then take you to a My Oracle support page where you can download the zip file. You'll need to agree to a few crucial terms and conditions. Just hit I agree and then you have the zip file from there. So so in this video, I'm going to launch a database system on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So the first step is to create a VCN, or Virtual Cloud Network, where your database system will reside. So to do that, it's straightforward. In the, in the launch wizard, just give your VCN a name. And we can choose the shortcut option here just to create all the resources automatically. So if we hit Create, um, our VCN is created pretty much instantly. And you can review the, the subnets created in each availability domain and the corresponding security list. So every VCN comes with a default security list, and you can add different rules to this. So for example, if you want to open port 1521, it's straightforward. You just add a rule as follows, and then hit Save, Save the Security List Rules. So navigating to the DB Systems, uh, page on our console, we can just launch a data, database system very easily from the launch wizard. We can call our database system dbsat2. We choose an AD or an, an availability domain, which is a data center within a region. We can choose bare metal and then select the minimum shape. We could have chosen a VM. Um, we chose the database edition. And then we can choose to enable um, the number of cores in multiples of two up to 36 cores on this host. We can change that afterwards if necessary. We can bring our own license or have a license included option. And we paste in the public key here and we'll connect with our private key eventually. Um, again, we select the VCM we just created. The subnet is in the AD we chose. We can give the host, um, the database system, a host name of ORCL and a database name of ORCL. We choose the database version. And then we need to give it a strong password. And then we just hit Launch Database System. So once our instance is launched, we need to take note of the public IP. And we're going to use this later to connect uh, via SSH and WinSCP. So using WinSCP, we need to transfer our DB, DBSAT zip file onto our instance. So we can create a new site by entering the public IP. Our username is OPC. And under Advanced, we're going to add our private key pair here, which corresponds to the public key pair we provided when we launched the instance. So I've already saved these details here, so I can log in with, with these details to the instance. And from here, I want to upload the dbsat zip file onto our instance, so we can do so with the upload command. I've already done this, so it's already in place, but that's the command you'd use to upload it. So we close WinSCP, and we're going to SSH into our instance now with a public IP, and we're using PuTTY here. So in this case, the details are as follows. So it's OPC is the username at our public IP, and we provide our private key pair here. Again, this is the same one that corresponds with the public key we previously provided. We can save this session as dbsat2. This logs us into the home.opc directory. And we can see our dbsat file is here. So next we'll create a, a file for this. We'll cr create a directory for dbsat. So I'll give it um, the name dbsat. And it's created here for us. And next we're going to copy the zip file into 
into this uh, directory. And we need to use the sudo permissions to do this. Um, just be careful that the zip file has the correct permissions. So if we do an ls al, we'll see um, the zip file has the permissions opc. And I've given it loose permissions here for demo purposes. But if necessary, you might want to run the chmod command or the change, ch ch change ownership commands. So if necessary, you'd run a command like that, chion, and maybe the chmod command as well, which is you run with the sudo permissions. So if we clear the screen for readability and then change directory into dbsat directory, we can do an ls here and see that our zip file is here. Again, I've given it loose permissions again and made sure the owner is opc with full permissions. And from here, we'll just unzip the dbsat zip file. And again, get confirmation in the output and confirm it in the results. And again, we have the correct ownership. And if you want to change the permissions as well, just to be sure, you can run a similar command to before. Just see the upper directory and rerun the chmod command. We can see um, we have all the necessary ownership and permissions to run these scripts. So next, if we clear the screen again, and we're going to set a few environment variables with the aura env file. So we'll set the SID to be orcl. Um, we can confirm this on the dashboard. If we click into the database system, each database system comes with a database running on it by default. A database system can have multiple Oracle homes. Um, so in this case, I've called our database ORCL. So confirm the SID is that as follows. And again, we can confirm this to screen, but echo it out to screen just to confirm it. The Oracle SID va variable should be ORCL. And again, the Oracle home variable should be the path as directed there. If necessary, we can also run the server control command to verify the same information. Or if necessary, we can also have a look at the Aura tab file. So if we uh, cut that out of the screen, it's in the Etsy directory and it's Aura tab. And we can also connect to the database to verify everything is working as it should before we run the scripts. So if we SQL plus in is no log and connect to the system. We just provide the password we provided uh, when we launch the database system. And confirm it's connected there. And we can also con connect as the sys, as sysdba. Uh, and again, provide the password. So everything is running as it should be. We can exit out of the SQL command prompt, clear the screen. So next, in the dbsat directory, I can do another listing. And we're going to run the dbsat collector tool from here. So um, the command to do that is as follows. It's um, our current directory are running the dbsat tool, the collect component. Our output file is going to be called John G. So once we run this, it'll prompt us for a password. And this is the password we provided previously. It should also prompt us for a password to encrypt the output file. And for demo purposes, I'm just going to use the same password. And we get confirmation that it's, it's uh, completed successfully. So if we clear the screen again and do an ls, we should see a file here called John G zip. And next, we're going to run the report component of of the dbsat tool. And similarly, let's run as follows. It's this um, similar command, only this time we're running the report component. And again, it'll prompt you for a password. And this, again, is to encrypt the output report file. And again, this will be a zip file, 
which we'll need to unzip. Once we see confirmation, successful output, successful completion, we can take a look here. So this time it's the John G report file we're interested in, the zip file. So we simply just unzip that file. And again, it'll ask us for the password again. And we get confirmation we have the outputs that we're expecting. So if you remember back in our tool, the tool in our documentation uh, confirms the DBSAT tool provides us with the output in four formats. So these are for different audiences, obviously. And we can take a look at those in more detail now. So if we clear the screen and have a look at these output files, uh, the HTML file provides all the details you'd expect the time the report was run, a summary of the findings, and some of the critical details it provides to to the admin running this tool. So this is tool is run on just a default database system, a vanilla instance with no real misconfiguration on it, but your standard database would have a lot of potentially have a lot of holes and misconfigurations pointed out here. And similarly the Excel file is the same information just provided differently. So it's for a different audience and um, for a different uh, scenario perhaps. You also have all this information provided as a, a JSON file as well, which you can feed into different tools and utilities. And the information is also provided as a text file. 